Hey, what's up? It's Nathan here with thebtccourse.com. And in this video, we're gonna address the question, does Bitcoin waste energy and is it bad for the environment? So let's just go ahead and get straight into it. Now, first things first, like what actually gives somebody the right to tell somebody else what they can or cannot use energy on? Like that, that's like a basic human right, uh, in my opinion. Uh, so th th that's where we'll start. Now, is running your air conditioner at a comfortable level a waste of energy? Yeah, maybe you could run it, you know, a few degrees warmer and you'll be sweating all day. Or you can run it, you know, at a nice reasonable temperature where you're comfortable in your house. Like, is, is that a waste of energy? Running the dishwasher, the washing machine, the dryer, etc. You don't need to do use energy for those things, right? You can do manually. You can live like a caveman. You can eat off of a stone or whatever it might be. Driving to the store to pick up a six pack of your favorite beer. You know, it's Friday here. You know, people are driving or getting their, their favorite beverages. Uh, is that a waste of energy? How about Christmas lights? Like all these things don't need to exist, right? They're nice to have, but who who gives what gives somebody the right to tell somebody else that they can't do these things? Like that that's where we have a fundamental issue. So let's say that you think all this is a waste of energy, everybody should suffer, and using energy is a bad thing. Well, then in that case, we probably need to have some sort of reason or s something to substantiate Bitcoin's energy usage to make it worth using energy to mine Bitcoin. So I'm gonna go through a few examples of why Bitcoin's energy usage might be a good thing. So how about allowing unbanked individuals the opportunity to participate in global, com global commerce? So right here we have how Bitcoin helps Afghan girls achieve financial freedom. At least 2,000 girls in Afghanistan are being paid in Bitcoin for their blog writing and social media skills. Like We can't send them dollars. I don't even know what currency Afghans use. So you know I, I'm not going to send that to them. But I could send Bitcoin to them, right? Cross-border payments, you know, a universal currency. Bitcoin can fix this. All right, how about giving individuals living in harsh, oppressive conditions personal property rights? So there's this podcast by Peter McCormick, What Bitcoin Did, and one of his later episodes uh, right here is with women that live in battered situations or battered relationships where they're being abused and also men as well. And one of the, the issues oftentimes is that the reason people don't leave their abuser is because they don't have the financial means. They don't have any savings. They don't have any way to escape and afford, you know, their, their new life away from their abuser. So they stay. Whereas they're using Bitcoin to allow individuals to, you know, get savings and escape from their abuser. So, and, you know, this is for folks being abused, but think about oppressive governments and people fleeing those and being able to take wealth with them and so on. So Bitcoin fixes this. Uh, how about enabling refugees the opportunity to escape with something? So I kind of just mentioned that, but here we go. Ukrainian refugee flees to Poland with 2000 in Bitcoin on a USB drive. And there are a bunch of different stories about Ukrainians fleeing, Russians fleeing, and so on with their life savings stored in Bitcoin because, you know, they can't carry their, their gold. Their gold will be confiscated if they try to cross the border or they, they can't take all their, you know, household belongings. Like they're in a war zone and they got to get across the border as soon as humanly possible and they could secure their wealth by memorizing 12 words in their head. So, I mean, that that's something I think that is worth, you know, keeping up and running is the Bitcoin network. Now, how about remittances? So there's this long report here, 72 pages. So Bitcoin versus the $156 trillion global payments industry. So yeah, lots and lots of money is flowing from, you know, the United States or first world economies to third world economies. And a lot of the companies that offer this, like Western Union, charge high fees on these transactions. Whereas Bitcoin, especially over the Lightning Network, has little, very, very, very little fees and can save these individuals, you know, sending you know, small amounts back home but that make a big difference, you know, it can save them a significant amount of money. So remittances could, you know, it's pretty beneficial if, if you're in that type of situation. Now, how about bringing power to villages in Africa? So there's a company, Gridless. So they build and operate Bitcoin mining sites alongside small scale renewable energy producers in rural Africa where excess energy is not utilized. So basically it's making it like actually investable to bring energy 
businesses to Africa because Bitcoin miners can hook up to these energy producers and you know pay for the electricity, whereas the Af Africans might not have enough money to really you know warrant paying for the energy. However, if it's subsidized with subsidized with Bitcoin mining, well then you can bring electricity to these African countries and you know bring in electricity where they can keep the lights on at night so they can read, study, learn, get on the internet, you know, become better educated, participate in global commerce and so on. Like it's all good stuff. And so Bitcoin is helping bring energy to individuals living in Africa and other places as well. Again, these are just some examples. There's many, many more, but I'm, I'm not going to sit here for, you know, 10,000 hours going over every single example. All right, so what about government oversight and control of how you spend your money? So there's all this talk of CBDCs or central bank digital currencies. You know, China has one. They have their social credit system where they can control, you know, how you spend your money, when you can spend your money, what you can spend your money on. They'll automatically take money from you for taxes or if you, you know, get a speeding ticket or something like that or have to pay a fine, they'll just take it straight out of your account. You know, it makes your life nice and easy, right? But they're tracking every single thing you're doing. And maybe they're like, hmm, you might have had a little bit too much red meat this week. No more red meat for you. You must eat soy. And yeah, we're not quite there yet in the United States and I don't even think China's quite there yet, but you know, it can go that way. So is that something worth, you know, using a little bit of energy to protect yourself against by having Bitcoin, you know, a parallel banking system set up and running? So what about, you know, a parallel banking system, which currency cannot be manipulated? You know, over the last couple of years, the currency has been inflated heavily. You, everybody knows that. So with Bitcoin, there's ever only going to be 21 million. So how much wealth is destroyed with that inflation? And then what's the energy cost of all that wealth destruction? Like it's pretty significant if you sit back and think about it. All right, so now I've given some examples of it being a waste, but how about the environment? So Bitcoin miners are being used to offload excess energy and build out renewable energy sources. So here we have a bunch of different renewable energy sources like solar, wind, hydropower, geothermal, tides and oceans, waste energy, and so on. And so like, it, it costs money to build these. It costs money to build the windmills, to build the solar panels. And so they need to have a return on investment. And the thing with these renewable energy sources is that sometimes there's a lot of sun and a lot of wind, but sometimes there's not. But in instances where there is a lot of sun or a lot of wind and there's excess energy, well, right now what they'd have to do is just put that energy into the ground. They can't store it into batteries. There's not enough batteries out there to, you know, take on the energy or the excess energy produced by these renewable resources. So they basically just, you know, let it go into the ground. But what you could do is stick a Bitcoin miner on the end of that and any sort of excess energy produced when there's a lot of wind or a lot of sun could be turned into money and therefore make it more profitable to build out these renewable energy resources. So that's another thing. And we're back over here. So, or the reduction of methane flaring thanks to Bitcoin miners. So if you don't know the garbage dumps, they produce a lot of methane. And so what you can do is stick a Bitcoin mine on top of a dump that's producing all this methane. Thing. And the methane can be converted into energy and that energy can be used to mine Bitcoin, making it profitable to actually utilize this methane versus just burning it off into the atmosphere. And so this is actually making Bitcoin mining carbon negative. So that's even better than carbon neutral or, you know, the production of carbon. So there's just an example of that right there. And finally, how much energy is actually used to maintain the current financial system? We have, you know, the banks and the bankers. We have the militaries that are backing or defending the current fiat currencies. We have Western Union. You know, we've talked about that with the remittances. We have the Federal Reserve and all the employees that work for it. We have the Treasury. We have all that stuff. And Bitcoin can disintermediate much of that fiat system, saving tremendous amounts of energy from being wasted. So when you think about Bitcoin, don't think about it in addition to our current system. System, think about what it can take from our current system and actually save or reduce the amount of energy that is being used. And again, think about it on a global scale. We talked about Afghans, we talked about individuals in Africa, we talked about people being oppressed and so on during this video. We're not just talking about the rich, wealthy investors or bankers or anything like that. So to me, Energy use is not a bad thing on its own, and I can find dozens of areas where Bitcoin's energy use is a net positive for the environment, society, and the governments. Also known as ESG, which is a bad word, but Bitcoin really does help in all three of those areas. 
Now, of course, this was just kind of a high level video. You can dive down the Bitcoin rabbit hole, spend tens of thousands of hours on it. And so where I recommend starting is right here. I have a bunch of Bitcoin resources. So blogs, podcasts, books and YouTube videos that I watch and listen to to become or more orange pill pilled and learn more about all this stuff I just talked about. So if you're interested in diving down the rabbit hole, I recommend this resource right here. And of course, links to everything in the description down below. And I hope you have a great rest of the day.